Well, good evening, everybody out there in Chester County, Coastville, and on my Facebook page. Coming to you live on a special Friday night special is none other than me, Brother Fonz, and doggone it, I got somebody here today. And her name is Julie Foster. I am so excited to grill her. I mean, ask her questions. This is going to be so nice. I'm telling you, so I want y'all to just lean back. Now, my viewers, you know what you're supposed to do. Go to your electronic devices and hit the share button so we can kind of like pass some of this information around. Word on the street, she does work for people for free too. Nothing better than free, so y'all better tune in. Because look, I am so doggone excited. Mm. I think we're going to be just fine. Of course, stuff is wanting to act crazy about right now, but that's okay. All right, we got a couple of viewers so far. Don't y'all go nowhere because this young lady, I'm telling you, I am so blessed to be getting some of the people on this show because look, they are all smarter than me. And you know, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to change your room. And this is a different room. We're down here at a farmhouse with Miss Julie Foster. And I'm going to tell you her claim to fame. Let's let this music play out just a little bit more. And then we're going to bring her on, 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 on. Ah, man, this is a great way to set this thing up. I really, really, I really enjoy this. Uh, I, re I recently found this theme song, and you can't tell me I'm not special. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, before I go any further, I got to make, make sure I give tribute to, the, to our sponsors. And tonight's show is being brought to you by Allen's on First Pizza, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just like a real TV show, ain't I? That's right. They're located at 347 First Avenue, and their phone number is 610-383-4077. You can call them now and catch them because I'm telling you, this is Soul Food Weekend. They got big feet oxtails and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, some of y'all still country, go ahead and give them a call and see if they can't rustle you up something on this evening. Now, I ain't going to get a whole menu. I did that this afternoon. We want to be a good steward of this young lady's time. So, first of all, before I go any further, I want this young lady just to introduce herself to our viewers and tell us and tell us a little bit about yourself. Good evening. Hey, go. My name is Julie Foster. I'm the new staff attorney at Friends Association. I'm uh, just about one month in on this uh, fantastic job where I get to run an eviction prevention court program in uh, this is pilot program currently in three courts in Chester County where we work with tenants and landlords to try to help people stay in their homes. And right now we have some exciting funding from the federal government that we're able to actually help landlords get paid through this funding so people don't become homeless. Hey, wait a minute, somebody, somebody must know you or they sound like they know you. Nadia Gray said, hey, Julie. Oh, and I do the best. Oh, you know Nadia, that's all right. City Council, I'm not sure how to say it, person, he, yeah. her, whatever, because I don't want no trouble out of Nadia. Hi, Nadia. She said hi. Hey, look, now wait, before I like for my viewers to know what you do, I like them to know a little bit about who you are. First of all, where are you originally from? I grew up in the Hudson Valley in New York. Um, I moved to Pennsylvania in uh, 2007. So uh, I originally was living in the Overbrook neighborhood of Philly before I came out here to Chester County. What? I used to go to Overbrook High School a long oh, time ago. Yeah. Long time. 59th Street, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, you not you say, hey, Mr. Fonz. Everybody calls me Fonz too, Julie. So, I mean, you might as well get to it. All right, now, what school did you graduate from? I went to Penn Law School. Penn, Penn Law School? Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Now, but what high school? Oh, uh, it was a it was a Poughkeepsie Day School in uh, in New York. Yeah, and you know yeah. why I always ask that question because there's a reason. Did you ever foresee yourself doing what you're doing right now when you were in high school? That's a really good question. Uh, I was very involved in politics and public service. Um, so I, but I didn't envision it crystallizing in this way. This is sort of the like most magical manifestation of my <laughs> young dreams. 
Oh, that's good. That's good. Hey, Daria Turner just checked in. Daria, it is good to see you are watching. I'm so glad we got Julie Foster here. And you know why I always ask that question? Because a lot of times uh, our life doesn't wind up the way we think it's going to be in the beginning. And I like my viewers to know that's okay. Because you don't, you don't do what you thought you were going to do. It doesn't mean you're a failure, blah, 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 blah. It just means you know how to change and, and all those kind of things. So I like always asking that question. How did you become attached to friends associations? What, what, what was the journey like that brought you all the way to here? Yeah. Well, I went to law school to do public service work. Uh, and I was previously um, mostly involved in civil rights litigation. So I worked at a number of anti-discrimination organizations, uh, the AIDS Law Project, the Public Interest Law Center. Uh, and then more recently, I've been, I got into doing eviction work as a pro bono attorney. So I was volunteering to represent people in the Philadelphia landlord tenant courts. And this opportunity came up to do this work full time. You know, you're, you're doing something for fun, you know, in your spare time and you get to do it as your, as your dream job right here in Chester County where I live. Wow. Hey, Iris Holmes checked in. Sister Iris Holmes, it is so good to see you. Iris, this is Julie Foster. And she does, she works with eviction protection care and all that kind of stuff. We're going to find out all that kind of, I can tell by the look of her head that she's got a lot of knowledge in there, right? So we're going to go right on down this list and see what she can tell us, what we can glean from this young lady. So now check this out. Where am I at? Okay. Now, Chester County, we all know is one of the wealthiest counties almost in America, but we're definitely going to say Pennsylvania, right? So is, so is homelessness really a big problem in our area? Well, it makes it a bigger problem because housing prices are astronomical. I mean, when you get evicted or people are trying to relocate, say the place you're living in is not being maintained, it's not safe or healthy, it's almost impossible to find a new place to live because nobody can afford it around here. Wow, wow. Okay, so now this homelessness situation. Now, I read, I read, I read some papers that that I got that I gleaned from you, and it was talking about there are four areas where you guys are focused on. Can you kind of like elaborate on those four areas? Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, so my work focuses on the eviction courts as, as an attorney. Um, Friends Association is actually uh, one of the oldest nonprofits in Pennsylvania. It's been around since 1822. Uh, it was originally founded by women and African Americans to support children uh, who'd lost their parents in Philadelphia. And over the years uh, has come to focus on people who are unhoused or at risk of becoming unhoused. Uh, so the, the four areas are starting with preventing homelessness. That's what the eviction prevention program is to intervene initially to keep people in homes that they already have. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also uh, case management and support for individual families who might need assistance to keep their homes or to find a new home to live in to avoid becoming homeless. Friends also operates a shelter, an emergency shelter for, it's actually a six unit apartment building. I've, I've been in a lot of shelters in Philly and they're kind of like big dorm rooms or almost like warehouses with beds. Um, this space feels like a home where people have a door, they can keep their belongings, they can keep families together. Friends believes in a housing first approach, um, mm -hmm. which to me is so refreshing because I don't know how the heck you get off drugs or find a job or, find God, whatever your thing is without having a safe and stable place to live. Um, the third area of focus is partnering with families to stabilize them. Um, so that's ongoing case management work, finding support for everything from mental health and substance abuse needs to financial assistance, getting a stable employment, uh, and also promoting systemic change. So doing advocacy work to change policies and practices to make things more affordable and accessible to low-income people so we can have a vibrant mixed income community here in Chester County. Man, I, I, I like I like what you're talking about. I love, I love what you're saying. But you had me at, at civil rights. <laughs> that, that's right the damn, yeah. Hey, but look, I said I think Chester County should have a rent law. Is there such a thing as a rent law? What do you mean by a rent law? I'm not sure, Iris, you're going to have to type in the comment section. What do you mean by rent I mean, law? There, there's a whole lot of laws, just even coming from Philadelphia, where a landlord has to have a license. They have to have an inspection that says this place is safe and clean. Um, they also can't just kick you out because they don't like you anymore. 
Um, they have to have a reason to evict you. That's actually a new law that was passed in 2017. Uh, which is a big problem because people have a lease and it runs out or they're on a month to month lease. And so they're very vulnerable because that gives the opportunity to lose your home that you did not. I had a client uh, last year. She did nothing wrong. Her landlord sold the building. The new owner didn't want to rent it to her anymore. They wanted to sell it. They wanted to renovate and to send it to someone more wealthy. And so she lost her home through no fault of her own. And that is now a law in Philadelphia, but we have no such protections here in Chester County. Well, you might have to start working on that. What do you think? That, that's the advocacy piece. Absolutely, yeah. That's what I like to hear, that's right. Okay, now, so what made Friends want to start an eviction program? It's been a long time need in Chester County. Uh, we, we have some legal aid of Southeastern Pennsylvania um, has been doing great housing work in our area, but with COVID, the need has become extraordinary. So many of my clients say they've you know, never needed help before in their lives and were faced with this global natural disaster. And suddenly people for the first time in their life can't pay their rent. Um, and then also the landlords through no fault of their own aren't getting the money that they need to be able to maintain their homes and pay their mortgages. Uh, so this program was started in September with the availability of funding from the COVID relief uh, and has been able to grow now into three courts in the Chester County. There's 17 district courts. And so we have uh, the eviction prevention program, the EPC in three of them. And we're gonna get into that in just a little while. I have a viewer that wants to know, there used to be something called a rent control law. Is, uh, have you heard of that? Or, and is that still uh, uh, available or is that still pertinent? Uh, not, not so the challenge is when we talk about like laws, most most of the laws in Chester County are going to be depending on the township that you live in. So rent control limits how much your landlord can raise your rent. Um, and this is also a part of that that law I was mentioning that Philadelphia recently passed, where a landlord is limited on how much they can increase your rent month over month or year over year, depending on how long your lease is. Um, in in Chester County. We don't have townships with those kinds of protections yet. It's also an advocacy piece we can work on. Um, there are some townships, for example, like Coatesville that does have a licensing department. They do require landlords to have a license and to have a certificate of inspection and to have a business license, right? They gotta be paying their taxes. Uh, so depending on where you live, you might have more or less protections based on what laws have been passed in your township or municipality. Okay, before I get to the next question, so far I see a bunch of ladies that are on here and I know I'm reading your mind right now, ladies. You're saying you love the look of the of the stone and everything and you would like love to know oh, where, where she at? Well, she's in a farmhouse. Tell them a little bit about this back backdrop because you do have a lot of women on here. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, I, I love living here. It's a over 200 year old farmhouse. It was the original home for this whole hillside that was a uh, operating farm. It's, it's, I still farm it today. Uh, it's in Bertrandville area of Pennsylvania. And it's really neat because the stone that you're seeing and the, the wooden post, they just dug it out of the ground. They just built this thing with what was here laying in the way that they cleared. There's some uh, trees actually in my pantry that they didn't even take the bark off of them. <laughs> So oh, it's, it's really, really amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's a tiny little house, uh, uh -huh. it's, but it's uh, really a fascinating historic piece. Cool beans, cool beans. Hey, Quentin Brown, it is good to see you. It's good to see you this evening. We have Julie Foster on here and she's an advocate. Uh, she's They started an eviction protection program and all things like that. So we're gonna keep on going. I'm really excited because we, well, we'll go straight into those district courts. Uh, I'm, I'm moving off the, the beaten path here, but since you opened up that can of worms, why do you think you, you see more evictions in those two or three district courts that you were talking about? Well, Downingtown um, is, is the highest uh, number of evictions in well, the data we have from 2020. Um, in part, it's sort of the diversity of housing so you're going to have more evictions where you have more um, multi-unit buildings, more renters. Downingtown also have had a number of clients who live in trailer parks where they may own their 
trailer, but they're tenants renting the lot where they live. Uh, wow, that, now that's, that's pretty doggone interesting. Okay, yeah. Okay, we understand the purpose of your eviction protection plan because you're trying to protect some people from being evicted. Now, what kind of resources are available to a family that's, that's in this program? Well, resource that's right now available to everybody who needs help paying their rent because they've had a loss of income due to COVID is called the Emergency Rental Assistance Program. I'm gonna say that again, because it's super important. The Emergency Rental Assistance Program, you call 211 to apply, wherever, wherever you're at in the county. And this is funds that can help you pay back rent, can help you pay utilities, and it can help you pay future rent as long as you, it's, it's, I know it's amazing. It's just incredible. We've had this eviction moratorium because of COVID, um, but it's just been kicking the can down the road because the landlords aren't getting paid and they can't hold out forever. So this money not only helps the families stay in their homes, but also helps ensure we don't lose those homes as affordable housing that we have such a limit of stock of in Chester County. Did you say call 211? Yes, call 211. And that'll go directly into y'all. There's three uh, pro agencies that are administering the applications. Friends Association receives all of the applications where someone has an open eviction case. So I can help coordinate and give assistance if someone, for example, we've had some people who already had a lockout be ordered and they say, hey, the sheriff's coming on Monday. What do I do? Because mm -hmm. we're able to then help the landlord get paid so we've been able to uh, work with the tenants and the landlords to avoid the person getting evicted. Okay, now my viewers, now I don't know if y'all really understand the words that's coming out of her mouth, but she is offering a lifeline to maybe, if maybe not you, but if you know people that are in need, please share this on your pages. Let's not be selfish with this information because we perish for a lack of knowledge. And right here, we have Julie that's giving us knowledge. She said 211. We're talking about three numbers and help us on its way. Uh, now, let me ask you. See, now I'm getting off my paper now. That 34.5 million uh, rental assistance, era, is this the same thing we're talking about, what you're talking about? Yes, it is. Rental yeah, and utility a, assistance. Exactly. Yeah, it's a lot of money. And again, what's really great is it's not just going to clear up your eviction case, but it will help you stay in your home until you're able to get back to work. Hey man, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. People are people are trying to make a difference, and that is good. Now, is there any cause for the person that's utilizing your services? Is there any cause for any cost? Do they have to pay oh, anything? No, it is a free service. Did y'all hear what she just said? She said free. I'm gonna give it two more seconds and let it sink in. Did you get it? Free. <laughs> 211, you got problems. You got problems with your rent. I'm going to replay this over and over tomorrow, Julie, and I'm putting it on all my platforms. This is this is the help that we've been looking for. Seriously speaking, uh, I, I pray that you use this program. Call Julie up, make her your new best friend, all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> now the, the other really important thing that can help people who are behind in your rent. So when you call 211, that helps you get connected with the funding application. So if you qualify, you can get help paying your rent and utilities. If you have a current, if you're behind in your rent because you had a loss of income due to COVID, a lot of people know about this eviction moratorium or this halt to evictions that the Centers for Disease Control has issued. Um, what, I, what I'd love to share with people is how to use it. Like how does that actually work in real life? So the, the trick of it is there's this handy form and we can post this too. It's called the CDC declaration. And it's got two columns with check boxes. You have to check off as many as apply to you in each box. The box is in the back and you sign it and you give this to your landlord. You can text it to them. You can email it to them. You can hand deliver it to them. Take a photo. You know, you want, you want to get some proof that you gave it to your landlord, but do it to, if you're behind in your rent because of COVID, give them this form today because okay. this form says they're not allowed to even file an eviction against you. And if they do file an eviction against you, bring this form to court, hand it to the judge. The judge should not order an eviction against you until after June 30th when this current order is set to expire. It's been continued several times so far. Um, the other thing, if you've already been to court or you didn't go to court and you have an eviction against you, 
the constable or the sheriff is going to come out to execute the eviction. Bring, have this signed CDC form with you, hand it to the constable. That should stop your eviction. All right. Uh, look, 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 it's look. Oh, my really viewers, powerful. Yeah. <laughs> my viewers, y'all better play this thing over and over and give it to a friend. Now, I have no one prop for the. Uh, now, is there a place where can I find that? Uh, I can download that, right? Yep, and we did we did email it to you. Uh, but if you just Google CDC declaration, you will I'll find get that. that. I'll get that and put that on my page. Thank okay, you. we have we have a homeowner. A homeowner said, "Can can a homeowner get some love?" Is there, there is a program. I'm I'm not familiar with it. Um, personally, I'm aware of it as like a consumer of news. There is a program for mortgage relief. Um, I believe it's if you have a federally backed mortgage. Um, but it's different from this program, which is specifically for tenants. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Now, for, for people that need their rental relief, do you know what the turnaround time is for them to get some love? It's pretty quick. Um, so the way that it works is you call 211, they do a brief intake, and then they say, so for example, they're going to ask you, have you gotten a notice from your landlord to quit? To, to sit, the landlord says, I'm going to evict you. Or do you have uh, an active eviction case? And they'll use answers to those questions to send people to the different agencies. Uh, within a week, you should get a call from one of those agencies to finish up your application. At that point, how long it takes is up to you. You know, if you're able to get all your documents that you need in quickly, we also have a checklist we can share with you of the documents that you would need. For example, your income, uh, how many household members you have, social security numbers, those kinds of things, uh, a copy of your lease if you have one. Uh, the landlord also has to participate in the program a little bit. So they would either have to provide a copy of the lease or sign a document saying, this is what our verbal agreement is. Mm -hmm. And they have to sign a certification that says, this isn't fraud, this person really lives here. I'm actually like, renting this property to them. Okay. Um, so depending on how long it takes for that to be processed, Usually it's it's a few weeks, uh, but it, it depends on the participants. Okay, now has this program been successful so far? Is a lot of people taking advantage of it? Yes. Yeah, we got we had um, 78 cases our first day. It's uh, one of those things where it's kind of like the floodgate. So the money was just released on April 5th. Uh -huh. um, so we're not even a month into this program yet. Uh, but it's been absolutely amazing when in the courtroom, you know, when you tell the landlords, hey, there's help out there. Um, they're usually very willing to, to stop the eviction. They want to keep, most landlords want to keep their tenants. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, y'all, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling y'all, this is like, like help sitting next to me. I, I don't know what y'all see, but that's what I see. Okay, now, what has been some of the biggest challenges when you deal with the homelessness situation? A lot of the public policy things that we talked about. Um, it's frustrating to see people living in substandard housing and they can't afford to go move somewhere else. Um, it's frustrating that if you're not in the city of Co in the city of Coatesville, you can call the licensing department and get help if you know your home is in disrepair. But if you know you're in a lot of the other townships, you're kind of on your own, and that's really disappointing. Okay, so all right, so so. The way for a person to apply for these benefits is to first call that 211 and, and get some documentation and all. They'll, they'll, they'll walk you through the whole process. Am I correct? Yes. That's how that thing works. Okay, as you don't have to reinvent the wheel, y'all. I thought I could pull something deeper out of her, but it gets no deeper than call 211. And they'll take it from there. You don't have to be scared or nervous. Just give it a call. You can't be no more scared than somebody trying to evict you. So call that number. And, and see what they have for you. And I'm sure if you do do what they ask you to do, you're gonna be just fine. And that <laughs> answers that question. Man, we rolling right along. <laughs> yeah, speaking be able... of being scared, you know, it's scary to get an eviction notice or anything from the court. Um, but I like to think of it as like, hey, this is my opportunity for my day in court. And I think the worst thing that people do is you they don't show up to court because you think I'm gonna lose anyway. I, you know, I'm just going to move. I don't want to deal with this. I have to work. I can't, I'm not available that day. Um, tenants, you can ask the court to reschedule the hearing if you can't make it to court that day. You're allowed to do that. Just call them up. There's a phone number when you get the summons. 
Uh, but the worst thing you can do is not show up because then all the court has is the landlord's story. And so if you're not there to give them your CDC declaration or uh -huh. just tell them your story, yeah. you know, then you're, you're very likely to lose. So, so, so now what is that I'm hearing in the background? Is that a cat or a baby? Uh, cats. Uh, yeah. A cat and I have a dog Sound and like chickens. It. <laughs> it's the whole menagerie. Really? Farm life. Uh, and, and on your, on your property, you got chickens and stuff running around. Chickens and goats and bees. And you take care of them. I do. Wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. All right. Now we, you already answered about the number to call. We can always remember that. I'm, I'm just on my Facebook page. I'm gonna put this big two one one on there and I'm have people ask me, what does it mean? I ain't gonna tell them. Maybe they'll ask. Let's talk about the Naya house or the Nia house. Do you know anything about the Naya house? Um, so my work is, is with the eviction prevention program, but, um, I'm really excited. It's, it's a new, uh, opportunity. Uh, home to allow women who are returning citizens to reunite with their children and to get the supports that they need to graduate out into the community. Um, so an interesting thing I just learned actually is that one in three women who are currently in Chester County uh, prison will be returning to Coatesville. So it's fantastic that this home is going to be located in Coatesville to service that enormous need. Hmm. Now, now, do you know anything about, is there a time limit uh, that they can stay there to get things back in order or, or how does that work? Are you oh, that's a good question. That, that's above my pay grade, but okay, I, okay, I can that's find good, out that's... and get back to you. <laughs> now, all right. So you're not really too much involved with Nia House or Nia House, right? Correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm primarily in the courts. All right. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Now, I understand that the last eviction moratorium expires June 30th. What do you expect to happen once it expires? That's a tough one. Um, so we've been through this a couple times. They've waited until the very last day. Like it was, I think, March 29th before they extended it. And so we had all these cases for April 1st that the courts will postpone the hearings. Uh, we were very confident in March that they were going to extend it. But mm -hmm. until they do, you have to prepare to go to court. You have to, you know, tell your tell your clients to take off work. Um, now that things are opening up a little bit, I honestly don't know if they're going to extend it. Um, one of the things that's really nice, though, is we're connected with a network of housing advocates of people um, in Philadelphia, across or Chester County, across the state, and nationally. And so we all talk to each other. And, and say like, what, what have you heard about this? And what do you think is going on? And so that's helpful as we get closer to June, um, we should have a, a general sense of uh, how likely we think it to, to be extended. So, so my question, so my next question would be, okay, supposing you get that sense that it's gonna actually really expire, will you bring on more help to uh, deal with the uptick in your clients or customers as you may wanna call them? We call them neighbors. That's a great <laughs> Wait, man, neighbors, that, my fault. Well, that, that's what I love about this though, is like, this is our community. Like every single individual is a valuable person who's my neighbor. And if they're not well off, then I'm not well off because we all live and rise together. Mm. So, Come on um, now. <laughs> but to answer your question. <laughs> uh, well, so one of the goals of this program is actually to create a pro bono clinic where we'll bring in additional attorneys and law students to be a lawyer for a day to uh, give advice, maybe like con free consultations to someone who doesn't necessarily need to have a, a lawyer in court with them and to create a diversion program. So before you get to court, you have an opportunity to try to work things out with your landlord like they're doing in Philadelphia. And I'm sorry, I know uh, I've learned in the county, you don't say, oh, in Philadelphia, they do it this, that, and the other way. But uh, it's not all bad in Philly. And before we go any further, I was, I was just thinking about a songbird and then up pops this young lady named Sister Ava L. Williams, who is a songstress originally out here in Coatesville and she has moved out there to Arizona. Top of the evening to you, Sister Ava. It is good to see you. And we're talking to Miss Julie Foster, who is an advocate, a lawyer who's working pro bono free and all that stuff to help those who may get evicted, rental assistance, utility assistance. Her middle name is Julie Assistance Foster. That's your new middle name. 
All right. I like it. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, all right. Now let's see what else. Cause you almost ran through all my stuff, but I got some more. I'm gonna think of something now. So you, you'll probably have more help come along the way. So let's, let me see if I can find something. Cause I don't want to get you off here. Cause you got a nice smile. You talking, I hear cats in the background. I hear goats going, eh, all that kind of stuff. Man, this is all right. Now look, how might this inspire others? What you're doing, how do you feel the effects of what you're going to do will affect those that you deal with. I know they're gonna be happy, but I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, it's amazing because I feel like this is a coalition of things that have been going on in my community. For example, I live in West Vincent Township and for a long time, I've been really interested in creating more opportunities for affordable, accessible housing in our community. And just this past month, uh, several things have happened in a, a neighboring township, East Pikeland, there's a new building that's going in that's going to be specifically for middle and low income people. And uh, in my township in West Vincent, we're actually looking at the County Planning Commission, which has proposed this thing called triple A housing. So it's housing that's affordable, attractive, ADA accessible, and aging ready. We have a lot of elderly residents in our county. And so I view this work as dovetailing with all of these holistic efforts to create a community that's livable and affordable for everybody. Hey, so while we're talking about rentals and housing, I mean, I'd be a fool not to segue into what my nonprofit or the nonprofit I'm the president of, the Movement Community Development Corporation, we just received a grant for $50,000. We got a nice, great press release in order to help renters become first time home buyers. So for those of my viewers out there, if you're considering being a first time home buyer, we are partnering with, uh, of course, the county uh, housing partnership, all, all, all the people, Second Century, y'all y'all know the deal, Habitat, Open Hearth, and we will be the gateway in Coatesville to get you started on home ownership. So if you're tired of your landlord or you're trying to jack up your rent and all that stuff, come on with us in this buy house, Chuck. We might as well. I mean, you know what I mean, Julie? That's you might fantastic. as well invest in your future. Good for you. That's, because, that's a great resource. Hey, because now look, rent as much as high as as high as mortgage. Yeah, yeah. I uh, was a renter when I first moved to. Uh, I was living in, in Center City, and uh, you know, you could live in Overbrook. You could buy buy a whole house for what uh, less than I was half actually of what I was paying to rent a one bedroom. Oh wow, it's crazy, ain't it? There's some places like that in Coatesville too, because I moved from one development that I was renting to a home, a three-story town home, and my, I think my mortgage was like $200 less. <laughs> oh boy, I thought I died and went to heaven. Okay, now look, now we're getting ready to come down to a close because we don't have to be long when you, when you, because you've given us some good information. But in closing, is there anything you would like to share? And my, my, my show is always based on three things, education, information, and inspiration. If you can pick any one of the three or all three and just take a few moments to talk to the people out here, uh, I would really, really appreciate it. I'm sure they would as well. My inspiration right now is gratitude. Um, I'm extremely grateful for Friends Association. It's, I get it, this feels like a dream job. Um, it's this amazing group of people who are really advocates. They're all focused on a social justice mission. Um, focused on trauma-informed services. We do an enormous amount of training to meet people where they are, not impose our expectations on people who are in need and to appreciate the trauma of losing your home mm -hmm. and the lasting impacts that that has on a family. Uh, I'm new to Friends Association, but I am just enamored with the quality of the services everyone provides and how deeply everyone cares about the importance of the work that they're doing. Wow, uh, just, just for an aside from that, uh, I got training at Friends Association maybe 20 years ago as a foster parent. And that's how I became a foster parent. Right. Going out there to Westchester and going through the training and everything else. So I know a little bit about Friends and they are our friend to the community. Hey, look, I just want to thank you for allowing me to come into your farmhouse. Love the back. I'm glad my wife's not looking at this because she's already talking about putting stones and on our walls here. And I'm like, 
Well, oh. tell her I have some smelly chickens in in the back. That's the part <laughs> not seeing. So it's, it's not as glamorous as it looks. Oh, that's so good. Hey, but look, I really truly appreciate you. And I hope my viewers who's listening, even if they're not listening, because I'm going to play this over and over and over, this is going to be one of my greatest hits. Because I think it's important for us to try to impact the people around us. And like you said, a rising tide lifts all boats. And that's what this thing is about. Trying to lift up our neighbors and everybody else. Julie, I want to thank you. It's been a plum pleasing pleasure. I want you to have a great night. Look, all you Coast Villians out there, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. Don't forget to share this to your friends. And uh, this has been a good night, this Friday night special. It was well worth me changing everything in my life for this Friday night. Julie, take care. God bless you. And we're going to see you soon, all right? Thank you so much. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, Coatesville's rising and peace out. Bam. Take care.